Okay. Can you hear me? There we go. Can you hear me? How's our latency? How's our lag? Uh, not bad. Okay, cool. I think I can hear you. All right, I'm going to close the door. All right. Also, I think in, in the beginning, all right, all uh, right. I think in the beginning as well, uh, like we talked a little bit too long with the kids, but like, I think we could still talk. It's important to kind of get the flow first, but like there's yeah, still yeah. a lot of good stuff that, you know, we want to, I think we, we don't, I mean, we both, we both know them, so we don't have to yeah. spend a lot of time. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's still good. Cause. All right. All right. We'll be on in around five minutes. Very cool. How do I sound on my end? Pretty clear. Not too. Yeah. You loud, not good. too soft. Okay. You do too. Thanks. What type of mic are you using? Just computer? Yeah, just computer audio. Uh-huh. <sighs> but Wanna do some vocal exercises? Go do it. I wanna hear that. <laughs> wow. Um, let's see what else I can do. Uh oh what a beautiful morning. Oh what a beautiful day. Oh what a beautiful morning. Everything's gonna be okay. Ah. Okay, Soprano, <laughs> I see you. I could have went D1 for choir, but my vocal cord got tired. <laughs> <laughs> I had a vocal cord injury, bro. <laughs> out, for, out for the season. <laughs> I know. You know, I actually did choir in seventh grade. Really? Yeah. yeah. How was it? I was saucing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. Oh, okay. It's 256, but. All right, man. Episode 40. 10 more until 50, though. Adults be like, I just hit the big 4 0. <laughs> <laughs> figured, figured I might as well go out and get the new Corvette. <laughs> or, my kid just got into Berkeley. Uh, 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 uh. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> Xbox Live. <laughs> Gold trophy. <laughs> God, bro. Dude, it's so funny too. Like to all my friends, everyone is like success HS. We need to leak. We need to link once this is over. Who said that? That's literally like any kid right now. Like, I know. Dude, <laughs> once this is over, we gotta link, bro. That's like <laughs> Bro. It's once this is over, we're death hanging out. I Yeah, we need to go on a road trip. <laughs> But then the problem is for the girls, they just do it anyway. <laughs> no, That's I'm just so playing. True. It's true though, right? You no, know, for birthdays, the girls yeah. are like, they all hang out with each they other. They don't care. I'm like, come on, man. Come on now. Did you see the picture of the beach in Orange Oh, County? yeah. Oh, my gosh. They're all outside. I know. Chilling. I, uh, while ballers like us are here suffering inside, man. Okay, it's the grind, you know. I know. This is what gets the results. That's facts. This is why you get the Lime scooter in Capitol Hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not the Uber scooter. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fun fact, Lime was started by a Berkeley Haas alumni. Really? Yeah. Dang, that's cool. Got to put the phone in low battery. Who was he or she? I think like Kevin Choi or something. 
That's a genius idea, though. Little scooters. Yeah. Let me fill up my water. Make sure we're good. They should come in in a few minutes. Hey. Hey, I don't know what this background is, but I gotta change this. Mr. Wong. <laughs> Dude, this is just me like messing with backgrounds. Like, I don't know. What have so many of these? It's okay. The background won't be recorded, so pick whichever one you want. No, I know, I know. I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> when I came in, it was just there and I was like, I don't remember putting this in. Nice. What's up, Ryan? I'm Justin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Alright, guess- so I don't know. Uh, I'll text Micah one more time, but. <clears throat> what have you been up to, Mikey? Uh, I don't know. Just like hanging out, reading, working out, just walking around the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, like, I feel like people, like, want to be productive all the time, but, like, it's not, it's not like, yeah. reasonable. <laughs> Given the circumstances, but it's rough. We'll see. We just gotta go with it. Yep. How about you? You've been um, keeping I mean, up your 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 story posts. <laughs> day forty nine, day forty eight. Yeah, I mean that's like the little fun I get to have at the end of the day. But uh, I mean, yeah, I mean a lot of like I kind of like it because you can re like I've been looking up stuff that I wouldn't normally have time to like look up. Yeah. So like stocks and like a bunch of like camera stuff. So it's like kind of nice. Also, so like yeah. relax and kind of look it up. I think what we're gonna do partially in the episode, uh, we're gonna you guys are gonna get to talk about your interest and stuff. And for you, I was definitely thinking we could do one on like video and like photography because I know you're super into that. And then also like teaching kids how to ice skate because I feel like a lot of high schoolers, like it's good to be a high schooler, but they can't really connect to like younger kids and kind of help them like work them through that. I don't know if you're yeah. teaching like younger kids or like adults, but I think yeah, it was mo- it was like kids like they were like as low as like four to like twelve. Okay. I would say so. Yeah, it's about like younger kid range. Cool. All right, Mike. I just said he has computer problems, but uh, wait. So does Washington have an ice hockey team, or do you guys just or is this just club? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it this, this is just club. I played on like the um, I played on the same team with Micah for I think four years, which was like in San Jose. So I had to like drive down to san jose for gotcha to like play yeah because I, I know our hockey team like they practice at the sharks place yeah you know what i'm talking about oh shoot nice background, okay micah, micah. Yes. hey hey <laughs> sorry i gotta this is from class <laughs> Eastern. Good afternoon all right y'all how are you guys doing good afternoon what's Love up the hair buddy yeah <laughs> Love it, died it back, dude. When no. I first saw that video, oh my goodness! <laughs> and your mom, yeah. your mom was so sad. Yeah, she, she was <laughs> very happy about it. But anyway, so yeah, what's up, guys? I so we started this podcast called Success HS, and we essentially just talked to a bunch of high school students who have reached the top of their field at their respective sport or academics, or you know just people who have done a variety of things within their high school career. And we just kind of talk about what they've done and some of their mindsets and habits. And so we decided it'd be cool to get two other like friends on, on this, on a, on a team, on a sports team, you know, just to see like how that dynamic is. And so, I mean, we're just going to introduce ourselves and then introduce you guys and then just say like, you can even say like what college you're going to, if you want. And, uh, then we're just going to kind of go into like into your interests like separately in school and then we'll talk about your friendship within the team and your accomplishments within the team and i know you guys go to like crazy places like you guys travel all over the place 
So yeah. we'll talk about that and just kind of go from there. It's just a normal conversation. All right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Justin hit it. All right. So yeah. And then it's going to be posted on Monday, right? I'll try to get it up sometime this week. Definitely. All right. And then like, don't worry if you mess up, we can like cut stuff out. And, <laughs> yeah, and definitely. Usually like the first 20 minutes is just us laughing. And, so don't worry. We've had some really bad ones in the past, but you know, we're getting yeah. better. This is our 40th. So we're good. Oh, and, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've yeah. done a lot, but, and also we have like a little outline, but feel free to like expand as much or as little as you can. I think we're working with like, Oh, our episodes are usually around 30 minutes. So there's definitely some time for some storytelling or if you guys want to tell like a funny story from a practice or a trip or something like, I think the audience would like to hear that too. <laughs> Wait, what's, what's your guys? I don't, I don't know if we can tell stories, Micah. That might be <laughs> I, I don't think that's, I don't I think, think, I think intro, I'd, have, I'd have to rack my mind for some PG stories. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any, I, yeah not, I don't have to put the explicit, the explicit stories. filter yeah. <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> Wait, what, so what's your guys team called? Um, so we play for, we play for the, uh, San Jose junior sharks, uh, program. And then, uh, Ryan and I played, we played what we played 13, three? 14, 15. Yeah. So, three years? uh, three years, I want to say. Yeah. And, uh, so in, in the junior sharks program, it goes up, it starts at a, which is the lowest travel and then goes all the way up to AAA. And so we were playing AAA together, uh, for three years. Oh. Was it 14s was double A though, right? Because they... 14s was double A. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I guess one year we we did have to go down to double A, but uh, yeah, we spent most of our time up at AAA with the Sharks program, and yeah, that's kind of how it went. All right. Solid. Okay, Justin. So I think we're good. Uh, we're on time. So just run the start. We'll run the intro, and then you guys can introduce yourself. All right. Just let me know. You are good to go. All right. What's up, guys? I'm your host, Justin Morgan. Welcome to episode 40 of Success HS. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Mikey Payne. Hey, guys. It's Mikey here. Hope everyone's been doing well in quarantine. Today, we have not one, but two guests for you, and we'd love to introduce them. Uh, all right. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hi. My name is uh, Micah Kim. I go to Valley Christian High School, and uh, this year, um, I'm heading out to Northeastern University. I played uh, hockey with uh, the other guests over here, and I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, hi guys, my name is uh, Ryan Wong, and I go to Washington High School with Mikey. And um, so, uh, me and Mikey used to play on the same Junior Sharks team for three years. And um, I'll be going to Cornell University for engineering in the fall. Awesome. And so, I just wanted to start this out by kind of introducing your guys' friendship and asking, how'd you guys meet? Oh wow, <laughs> man. Um, you know. I think what well, we played against each other. <laughs> yeah, we did. Times, I we did think. play against each other. Um, yeah. And then I came, well, because I used to play on a team that was in Fremont. And so um, I think our 13th year, I came down to San Jose to try out for the team. And then that's like where I actually got to meet Mike, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, we started, I think, yeah, he mentioned 13th year. I, th I think we were, you know, I guess we were, you know, we were one of the few Asians on the team. So yeah, uh, we kind of stuck together early on and we, we both played defense too. So that was also yeah. something we played together a lot as well. Um, so that kind of built up, you know, chemistry on and off the ice a little bit. So definitely. Yeah. And speaking more to uh, your guys' friendship and kind of how did you develop it in the rink and also outside the rink? I'm guessing shared practices and kind of traveling as a team is a great way to develop bonds with kind of your friends and the guys as you grew as a squad. Yeah, um, I think, you know, we spent a lot of time together. We were always at the rink and, and if we weren't at the rink, we were always on trips and, and going places with each other. And so I think, you know, we would always stick together and, and hang out. I think we, you know, hung out, you know, even outside of hockey and and we're together a lot. And so I guess, you know, when you're with someone and when you're with a team that long, you build up a good friendship and a good relationship. Uh, that's kind of just beyond the sport itself. So it's nice. And yeah, then, I think like yeah. Um, for us, it was um, we, for like when we play hockey, it's we spend so much time together that sometimes we spend more time with each other than maybe some people at our school. So I think that kind of uh, when you have your teammates, you become a lot closer to them than sometimes your high school friends just from – uh, spending time with them and like being with them all the time. And one big part about your guys' team is you guys travel all over the place. And one big part about 
team team bonding is going through adversity together. And so can you guys speak to, uh, well, first of all, indicating some of the locations you guys have been to across the country and also how that's developed your, your team spirit? Um, let's see, man, locations oh. we've been to, wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll finish the list, you can start it off. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, all across California, obviously, um, LA and Anaheim, we would always, we play in a state league and a national league. And so uh, we play a lot down in, down in SoCal. Um, and then, you know, we move all across uh, the United States, mostly the Midwest and, and some on the East coast, but like Detroit, Dallas, uh, Denver, uh, we went up to Washington, been up to Canada multiple times. Um, I don't know. You want to keep it going? Um, I mean, with Canada, it was uh, what Vancouver. We went to Quebec for oh, two yeah. weeks. Two weeks in the middle of the school year, that was, a, mm-hmm. that was an experience. Um, Philadelphia, uh, a lot, I feel like two, like a lot of towns in Michigan, two or three yeah. of those. Uh, we went to Minnesota a couple of times. So yeah, it was pretty much across the U.S. Like a lot of, like not as much East Coast, but um, every once in a while. I think Phoenix too, Las Vegas. Mm. Yeah. So. Did you guys ever feel any like any differences being from California? I mean, people usually think, oh, California, oh, I, you guys must be surfing every day. But like, I mean, the sharks are really good. There's the Kings, you know, like there is really kind of a hockey culture in California, too, that I feel like m- maybe a lot of people aren't too aware of. Yeah, um, I think definitely when you go out east, it's or, or just the Midwest, it's a lot more prevalent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the whole atmosphere and the demographic changes whenever we leave California, I think it's different. Um, one of our trips went to Columbus, I want to say, and it was, you know, we just drive to the rink and it's just complete cornfields everywhere. Um, it's, wow. it's different, you know, when we're here in the city and in the suburbs. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's a big shock and it's nice to go out and, and experience these different places. You guys mentioned yeah, that, going out. No. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. All right, go ahead, right? No, it's okay. Go ahead. I, don't know, I was just going to ask about, uh, well, you guys have gone, you guys mentioned that you guys went out to a trip during the school year and so do you guys each want to speak on how you guys kept up with your schoolwork while you guys are out there oh oh goodness <laughs> or didn't keep up <laughs> okay. it's a struggle well, okay so um so i think our our 15th year was the year where we really started picking up traveling a lot because i think we got um our team got involved with more of a, a, a national league so about i think every two or three weeks we would have to go to a tournament that was outside of the state and so, um, like, when that happens, you just have to use, like, every opportunity to try to do your schoolwork. And, like, obviously, like, it's hard to do that in the middle of trying to prep for a game because in those weekends you play anywhere from four to five games. So you always have to be, like, mentally preparing for those and um, getting ready. So doing schoolwork is kind of just finding the quiet points during the trip to do it. And so it's it's definitely hard to uh, balance. Like, you have to be completely on it and um, – like when you're, I feel like me and Micah, when uh, we both had dreams to go to top colleges, so it was really hard to stay with our schoolwork and at the same time try to play at a level um, that we were at um, for Triple A. Yeah. Um, yeah, Wanger mentioned, I think it's, you know, we're, it's funny because I think we spent more of our time like catching up on work than we were actually going ahead. Yeah. Um, we were always turning in work, you know, saying, oh, we missed a couple of days and, and, and here and there. But uh, I think we spent a lot of time doing homework, you know, on the planes on the bus rides, you know, we'd have late nights in, in the hotels and, and just trying to get everything done. Um, yeah, I think, I guess we kind of, we never really touched on it, but hockey is a lot different than other high school sports in a way. All right. Um, club is much bigger than high school. Um, mm-hmm. And so when it comes to that, especially because there's not a lot of teams in this area, we haven't, we have to end up traveling pretty far uh, to play any teams from our, our level of competition. And so that ends up resulting in us going pretty far from tournaments and stuff like that. And when you guys were out there, were there a lot of people that you met that, that knew that they wanted to go pro? Yeah. Yeah. I think Um, I would say like 80 to 90% of the people in like the level we were playing are trying to go to either college pro or like semi-professional like that's the main goal of being in that league actually one of the friends that me and justin had a kid in our elementary school named antonio tarantino yeah i don't know if you guys know him but i think he was a goalie Uh uh-huh yeah yeah he was uh he was our goalie this past year so we've had him for a couple years yeah Mm. um but yeah i think longer mentions you know (laughs) he and i were kind of the minority of where we were 
planning to go to college after high school straight out. I think a lot of people, especially at that level, um, is, you know, trying to go play at the, you know, at the next level. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's interesting to see. And it's pretty cool because um, we played against some of these guys that are going to get drafted this year who got drafted last year to the, to the NHL. And so it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, we've played against yeah. these guys and to be at that same level of competition is, is pretty cool. Wow. I mean, I, I also wanted to add, like, um, I think there's also, like, a separation when you think about, um, like, the guys trying to go professional and, like, trying to balance school. Because I think, like, I think me and Micah can both agree, like, sometimes on our team, there was, uh, there was guys that um, didn't go to public school. A lot of them um, might have done, like, mm -hmm. online school or, or yeah. homeschooled. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of have an advantage in terms of they can train whenever they want. Versus for us, we always had to go to school from 8 to 3 and then, you know, go to practice and then fit in homework. So, like, there's also – I feel like it's worth mentioning that disparity between, like, kind of the academic aspects sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it was – I think Wonger, Wonger didn't play this past year or the past two years with our team, but um, literally almost – I want to say, like, 60 or 70% of all the team transitioned to online school. It was crazy. Um, wow. and so they yeah, ended it's up, a huge number. Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> lot of kids. Um, they all ended up doing online school because then, you know, they, they could just get it out of the way easily and, and go work out or, or right. go do extra skating. In terms um, of time management, like, I, if you're really trying to really focus on hockey, like, I really see no downside in just going in and really just using the opportunity yeah, that you'd have exactly. to do that. Yeah. So, like, yeah, oh, for yeah. me and Mike, it was especially, like, difficult just in the fact that, mm -hmm. like, we, you know, like, on a team um, – when you're thinking about it in a team uh, like aspect, it's we're competing against guys that, you know, have that extra time to train and get ready. And we have to try to stay up to that level, keep our academics up and kind of uh, keep all the extracurriculars balanced. So, yeah. For, for athletes like yourselves and like seeing all, cause I mean, I would, Mikey and I would, would see a lot of people like that, people who would, you know, drop everything for sports cause that's what they want to do, you know? So one thing I wanted to ask you guys is where do you think the line is drawn between putting everything into sports and all that passion and then balancing it, balancing that out with school and wanting to go to college and having that backup degree, you know, because a lot of people don't have that safety blanket. So where right. do you think that line is drawn? It's hmm. a tough question. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, like that line is, I mean, it's not defined. That's the problem. Like everyone defines it differently. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, I, I think it's just a matter of opinion. <laughs> yeah. I guess like personally, when I, when we were playing and when I was playing, starting, it was like transitioning from sophomore to junior year. That was like uh, the big year going into your 16 and under year when you're 16 years old. That's kind of the big year for whether you make it or break it when it comes to your development as a player. Mm -hmm. And so I think you, I, I don't know. I made a decision at that point. It was, it was kind of, better for me to focus more on the academic side and and go trying to get into school as based off of academics than, than going for hockey and so I think it, yeah it was different for every person so there's not really like a well-defined line but it's really just how much how good you think you are and how good you think you're going to get within the next couple of years and, and to fit yourself realistically into a right. place just like being honest with yourself like if you know you yeah. have a chance and a support system to do it like go for it but maybe if you don't if you just haven't had the skill or like the time or maybe even like the family kind of system behind it maybe reconsider other options yeah mm -hmm. yeah That's and true. i think um for like some of our teammates like um like in the past some of them have tried to get like a better opportunity by moving to different places or going to prep schools like i think a lot of the guys on our 15s team eventually ended up at um prep schools or like, uh, like on the east coast even or states. yeah yeah okay, it's yeah. Uh, like all over the east coast mm -hmm. um i think one or two moved to michigan we had an old teammate that ended up playing for the national team so a lot of guys like to try to get a better chance move either to the east coast or kind of the mid uh, north midwest yeah i think uh and it goes back to the fact like you know, although hockey, we have three t NHL teams in California, it's just not as big as other places are, right? And a lot of the Division One schools are out in the Midwest or in the Northeast. And so um, college scouts tend to go out and look at those teams there because they're right in their backyard. And so I guess these players 
especially our teammates, a lot of them have just kind of transitioned or, or knew that they were going to eventually leave. Um, yeah. even leave like midway through high school. I mean, like I've heard definitely a lot more about like Boston college hockey than like UCLA hockey. So, like. right, right, right. <laughs> and I mean, that brings up another point about, you know, the, the, these athletes that are having to commit to moving to another state or to another region, their parents are also sacrificing for them when they do that. And so for you guys, people who have decided to to stay and, you know, focus on school and balance that, how have your parents played a, played a part in, you know, helping you guys travel and, you know, coming back and just helping you guys go through your hockey careers? Um, you want to, you want to go on? Uh, I mean, like with, so like uh, with our parents, I think when, when you're playing at the level that we played at, it comes down to like how much your parents ha- trust you with, being able to go to a different place without them and make sure you're focusing on like, if you're really passionate about hockey, doing that. And I think when, when we're going on those trips, there's a certain level of independence and freedom that we mm-hmm. have, but also responsibility. So I think like for me, I'm, I'm definitely uh, grateful for my parents for giving me the freedom to be able to travel by myself with the team to go places and um, play hockey. Cause I think that really taught me a lot about being independent and kind of, learning how to live by myself because even though you have like a coach who's uh, helping you like structure meals like obviously for us you have to balance the school and like I think uh, for me that was a really important lesson that my parents taught me without being there necessarily. Yeah um, I think another thing that uh, Walker didn't mention but like you know parents do come on the trips and so a lot of them are there to support us even though uh, starting like 14 years old we were doing what was called team travel where our parents wouldn't book the flights or anything, or they wouldn't come up with us in the hotels. We would stay with other teammates and we would all stay in rooms together. And, and so the parents would come on their own if they wanted to. And it was nice. I think, as he said, it was, it gave us a sense of responsibility. It kind of made us uh, just be more practical with our time uh, when we were on the road. And I don't know, they were just very supportive. I think they just always, told me that uh you know keep a good balance right you shouldn't be sacrificing your grades for a sport uh too much if you're not going to go for the sport fully so it was understandable i think you guys really gave a great overview about uh just kind of the team dynamics of hockey and also what you've learned from the sport Uh, me and justin were talking earlier and we also wanted to kind of bring in some of your guys outside you know accomplishments or outside interest because no person is one dimensional unless you're, you know, an NHL prospect. And even those guys aren't, you know, they're still yeah. doing some other stuff, but yeah. uh, maybe Ryan or Micah, either of you could go, but what are some of your interests or any of your kind of achievements or things you're interested in outside of hockey? Um, yeah, I guess a big thing that I've been a part of throughout high school has been DECA. Uh, Walker and I both have been a part of DECA. So it was fun because we would, Diamond. you know, yeah, yeah. I think you were part of it as well. Yep. Um, so it was nice. We, you know, even if we weren't playing together and, and in the past couple of years, we'd still see each other at conferences and, and meet up. And, um, you know, DECA has been a big part of my life and um, kind of taught me to, to love business and, and have a passion for it. So, yeah, that's something that I, I definitely – was a part of throughout high school. Awesome. Uh, Yeah, I think like uh, both me and Mike, again, uh, shared a bond through DECA. I think like, um, I think like obviously DECA is a great opportunity to meet um, a bunch of people that maybe you don't get to meet. Like um, I know a couple of people from Micah school that like I I met through DECA and like um, otherwise I wouldn't have met them. And then um, I think like for me, because I stopped playing my sophomore year, um, I had a lot more free time than Micah in terms of like getting to see what I um, like new things that I uh, got to do. So um, me and Mikey are, uh, well, we're on a the volleyball team for high school. And the volleyball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so I got, um, when I quit, I got really involved in um, a- the leadership ASB at my school. Uh, me and Mikey played volleyball <laughs> together for the last, I think, six years. So I got more into yeah. that. Um, I've been really into uh, photography and videography lately. So that's kind of like where I am right now in terms of uh, how much new time I have because uh, people don't realize how much time like hockey takes up throughout high school. I think like with Micah, like just hockey and DECA, that takes up so much time together. So like uh, for me, like I had a lot more freedom my last years of high school. So I got to uh, explore a lot more uh, different 
interest that I had. So. Yeah, and with all that sacrifice, I mean, I, I know there were some rewards and, and accolades that you guys gained from that. So do you guys want to speak on the achievements or maybe some awards you guys won uh, throughout your time on the team? Um, I think Mike has got more of those than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Mike has definitely got more than, the, more than me. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. Um, well, for I guess going off of team awards, um, we finished what second in states and uh, second 15s. in states, fifteens Pacific region. No, no, oh, first sorry, in second state. in districts. Yeah, yeah, second districts, first in state, fifteen, yeah. fifteens year. And uh, and then after Wagner left, uh, we ended up getting second the following year in states, and then this year, um, this past year in eighteens, we ended up winning states and districts. And uh, we were going to go to nationals, but then it got canceled. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, something was, happened. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that and Deca as well. So it was a little unfortunate. Yeah, rip. Oh yeah, you guys can't go to Nashville, huh? Yeah. With the it was oh, supposed man. to be this week. Yeah, it was like week. So yeah, yeah, this past weekend. Well, I, okay. Well, just for the record, Micah is like the DECA guy at our school. Like everyone I mean, knows Micah. He is co-president, so it's, yeah. it's about, <laughs> you can call him the DECA guy. Oh, boy. Yeah. He is the DECA guy. But anyways, so I think our Zoom time limit is coming to an end. So I'd like to end the segment by doing one of our favorite, our favorite little sorts of Mikey's three questions. So Micah, would you like to kick that off? Sure. I'll start off with the first question to my good friend, Ryan. And I know that he's been holding down a job, teaching some kids, uh, just teaching them how to ice skate. And, you know, ice skating obviously is a big part of hockey. You can't walk on the ice. You need skates. So, <laughs> Ryan, could you speak to your experience in kind of just teaching or dealing with maybe a younger set of kids? I mean, we're all super tight within our friend groups as teenagers and as high schoolers and incoming freshmen in college. But could you speak on reaching out to the younger kids and kind of mentoring them? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's really a different experience, like the first couple times that I had to do it, uh, because obviously talking to teenagers versus younger kids, it's a completely um, like you have to break it down for them and kind of um, give them something that they can understand. So um, for me, it was I, it was a new experience in terms of kind of uh, understanding uh, kind of how I, I how I even skate and kind of mm -hmm. translating that into teaching the kids and like um I mean at the same time I had a bunch of fun just kind of uh getting a new experience teaching younger kids so I think like that's kind of what I learned and kind of gained from that all right awesome Ryan and then on to the next question this one's for Micah so you mentioned earlier that obviously you're a co-president of your DECA chapter at school and you kind of enjoyed that as one of your high school activities what advice would you give to an incoming freshman who's maybe interested in like kind of DECA or speech of debate kind of because like there's obviously a lot of public speaking and kind of confidence that a lot of people kind of are taught through that program so what could you speak about mm. uh, just some Let's general the sales public pitch. speaking tips the sales pitch oh <laughs> the sales pitch go. oh boy <laughs> um yeah no I think DECA for for me really brought out a lot of me um it, it pushed me out of my comfort zone so when I came into high school freshman year I was a very quiet person um I wasn't really out, outgoing in high school uh, in the first year and I joined DECA and it was something where you know you're thrown into situations where you have to speak to others you have to go meet people right you have to present in front of judges and so it's something where if you're a little shy or if you feel like you don't you know know exactly what you want to do it's something where DECA gives you the opportunity to explore all avenues of business um, try a lot of new things and then also just makes you come out of that comfort zone and, and break out of a little bit of the introvertedness that I had back in freshman year. So it's been a lot of help uh, throughout all four years. Sweet. And for my last question, I'll direct it to both you guys. Uh, this one is kind of more about, you mentioned getting out of your comfort zone. Do you guys have like a favorite failure? And what I mean by this is maybe a time where you felt like something went wrong or you maybe got embarrassed at a presentation or, you know, maybe you, you didn't make a certain team or get a certain grade that you wanted. And could you walk through how you're able to work through that and bounce back from that? Because, you know, people might look you on the outside and they see, oh, he's a student athlete, you know, he's, he's a great leader. He's going to a great school and whatnot. But we, at the, as part of the show, we try to humanize people too. So could you explain a time where you maybe felt down and how you're able to work through that, both of you guys? Take your time too. I can, yeah. yeah. Um, 
<laughs> do you have anything? I don't, I'm trying to think. I got two right off the bat just because one of them was my college app. But, um, I mean, obviously when I quit hockey my sophomore year, I think that was a big point for me because, like, um, up until that point, I think hockey was a lot of what my identity at school was. So, like, um, I think when I quit, you have to kind of look at everything that you're doing and kind of redefine who you are. And then I think uh, the second one that I had was uh, when me and Mike were playing volleyball, I think my junior year was uh, a lot of more of a learning experience than me uh, getting to have playing experience, like, on the court. So I think, like, from that, I learned that it's it's a lot of the hard work behind the scenes that you need to do to be able to play at um, the varsity level for volleyball, especially in California. And so, like, um, for that for that year, for my transition from junior to senior year, I tried to work a lot harder. I think this year it paid off, and I think, like, that's yeah. kind of how I bounced back from that. Um, yeah, I think – I think the biggest thing that most people when, when looking out on the outside is um, back when we were 15, uh, I think in like the first two weeks of the season, I actually dislocated my left shoulder. Ooh, and then I'd go on and right. I'd go on and dislocate my shoulder for like three more times. And, oh, and at the end of, at the end of 16, uh, I ended up having shoulder surgery. And oh. so it was something where it, it kind of put a reality check on, you know, who I was as a person and especially, you know, letting something like hockey define me so much throughout high school, it kind of made me take a step back and say, Hey, you know, hockey is not your entire life. You know, there's more to things in high school. Um, gave me the opportunity to just reconnect with friends and be able to hang out and, and have more of the experiences that I wish I had more uh, throughout high school. And so I think it was something where it taught me to uh, just appreciate everything that is around you. Um, and mm -hmm. take advantage of as many kind of be grateful for it yeah and be grateful yeah. for it all right well thanks so much to ryan and micah for sharing those awesome stories there i'm gonna pass it back to justin to close off their show all right well this is the most important part what's you guys instagram and snapchat Let's plug <laughs> oh boy <laughs> um my instagram is just my first name and last name so micah kim and then my snapchat is the same it's mikey kim with uh 58 at the end so mikey kim 58 okay and then uh my instagram is uh my name reverse so it's wong ryan except there's no o and then uh my snapchat is my uh first name so ryan wong and then underscore 23 plug the photos too <laughs> oh boy okay all right well thank you so much ryan, uh, ryan and micah for sharing your guys stories i mean you guys are having experiences that a lot of athletes don't get to have especially you know it, with hockey in california you guys have the ability and the talent to stretch out and go to places where it's hockey centric like that is hockey town you know and so i think just having the ability to to go out and compete against that level of competition is you know it's unprecedented so uh, i'd like to let's just uh, Mikey, anything else? Any closing thoughts? Yeah, sure. Well, for the show, we've been definitely releasing a lot more of these during quarantine. Uh, stay posted for this episode and the episodes to follow. Our Instagram is success.hs. And yeah, you can find us on any podcast listening platform. Make sure to give us a subscription, a like, or, or a review. We have a five-star rating. And we've got listeners everywhere. And we're even seeing more listeners in uh, different international places, which is really cool during the quarantine. So yeah. Get on that and thank you so much guys for dropping by sharing your stories and really appreciate your time yep thanks for having us yeah thank you appreciate All right. it peace there you guys <laughs>